Let's take a deep breath, a really deep breath, inhaling, slowly exhaling and relaxing. We are just on the right place at the right time. We are allowed to do the nicest service, not only allowed, we are invited to do the nicest service to listen, to listen to these wonderful verses, these experiences through meditation by Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. So I'm really, really grateful for that. Oh, in the Varakshi, girl with blue lotus eyes, will there ever be a time when I can ornament you with blue bangles inset with many jewels? When can I adorn both your hands that are expert in all arts and that are very dear to Sri Hari with beautiful glistening rings? I repeat the verse. <clears throat> oh, Indivarakshi, girl with blue lotus eyes, Will there ever be a time when I can ornament you with blue bangles inset with many jewels? When can I adorn both your hands that are expert in all arts and that are very dear to Sri Hari with beautiful glistening rings? Notes, a divine stream of transcendental visions streams through Sri Raghunath's heart. Even those who are in the class of neophytes have some of these realizations. But Sri Raghunath is in the kingdom of Mahabhav. He, Raghunath, he experiences all these things in a lively and vivid way. And after experiencing this, he reveals it through his prayers. Even in his external consciousness, the internal consciousness drinks through. And that is why his prayers are touching the heart so much. In his Svarupa Vesh, Srila Raghunath Das Goswami, as Tulsi Manjari, puts blue bangles on Swamini's wrists a golden color slightly shimmers through the blue, reminding Swamini of Shyam, the blue bangles, and his yellow dhoti, the golden color. What a wonderful handicraft. How wonderful is also the address Indi Varakshi. Girl, with blue lotus eyes. Tulsi especially addresses Swamini like this to express what she relishes in, with, in her heart as she, as she sees the blue bangles. I repeat, Tulsi expresses Swamini as Inda Indivarikshi to express 
what she relishes within her heart as she sees the blue bangles. All the emotions are manifest in Baba Mai, her form and her bath are one and the same thing. Radhe, Radhe. <clears throat> If you don't mind, I can say something. My Didi asked, and something is coming to me. So from the commentary of Anantadas Babaji, we can see many points. But when we start to read the words, one of the most important things which I learned from our beloved Gurudev is to stop on the first word. And usually, the, usually in many words, especially in Vila Pakusumanjali, the first words is addressing. And here we can see and hear how Raghunath very nicely, sweetly, kindly, and tenderly address Radhika, O oh, Indivarakshi. So Gurudev tried to, learn, to teach me, when I hear this word, Indivarakshi, I have to stop <coughs> and try to go deeper in feelings, what is coming out, not through philosophy, but when someone is addressing, oh, hey, you girl with the blue lotus eyes. We should try to feel why he is addressing Radhika, blue, girl with the blue lotus eyes. And then when the feelings, and immediately with feelings, understanding is coming, then it will help us to go further. But I learned from him, and I'm trying to practice in my personal life, when I read, that I always read very, very slowly. And I'm not an attentive person, but I'm trying to, to be attentive on each word, because it helps me in Smaran. And then I understood that this is actually bhajan. Because I asked Gurudev, please, can you give me instructions for bhajan? You never gave me instructions for bhajan. And he said, really? <laughs> what I'm speaking all the time. <laughs> this is instructions for bhajan. So meditate on first word. And we have opportunity here to meditate on beautiful name of Shrimati Radharani, Indi Bharakshi. Girl with the blue eyes. Why Radhika has blue eyes? Because she is immersed in thinking about the blue color of her lover. And when someone is so much absorbed in his heart, in the lover, automatically, it will be very clearly seen in the eyes. They will be very restless, they will be very um, shining, And Radhika eyes, because this is transcendental love, are completely blue. So meditation in these blue eyes is something which are bringing us 
in the ocean of Radhika's emotion. I'm sharing what I try to learn from Gurudev, not like just to speak the words, but just to feel and practice bhajana during the time of speaking. So we can see here that Radhika's eyes are so beautiful ornament, Alankara. And this ornament is showing so much feelings which Radhika has in her eyes towards her lover. And I remember Gurudev said, it's not that only blue color is present in the eyes. It's all specter of different colors, like a rainbow, which is present in these eyes. Why? Because all these colors, rainbow colors, are representing the colors of Radhika's emotions. It's not something which we have to remember by heart, to repeat. We really have to go deep in the smaran, in the bhajan, and to feel that these colors are also present. in Radhika's eyes, but most prominent color is the blue. And Bab Ananta Babaji is saying in the middle, somewhere in the commentary, just, with, just one second to find, yes, golden color slightly shimmers through the blue. <clears throat> Golden color slightly shimmers to the blue, reminding Swamini on Shyama. So this is Kama Gayatri. This is Kama Gayatri when Radhika and her beloved are in very nice, lovely sweet embrace and when the all colors of emotions are mixing because in the transcendental world of love everything is a love so smell flavors are love the colors of our love everything is a love and when Radhika and Mohan are united in Sambhog, in Nivriti Nikunj, then this golden color is shimmering through blue color because all this Mahabhava golden color is pervading. Krishna's monsoon blue club color. And we can go further and say, this is our beautiful Goranga. Radhika pervade him with her emotions, which are gold, full of different kinds of gold. It's not one kind of goldness different kindness. Some gold has a lot of red, red color inside. So it means that so much anurag, passion is present there. And all these different variations of golden color are pervading the blue monsoon cloud color of her lover. And 
Who is witnessing all this? Manjari. <laughs> and only Manjari can speak about this. And only Manjari is al allowed to write about this and to help the others who wants to become Manjaris, to inspire them to come closer to Radhika and take this sublime position. So Manjari is putting the blue bangle on the hand of uh, two hands, of both hands of Radhika. And this blue bangle, why is the blue? Because there is many, many blue sapphire, sapphires, or I don't know to pronounce this, sapphires, are inset in this bangle with all these face, facets. But between them are so many other jewels. And each jewel has a different color. <clears throat> and each color presents specific emotion, which in one moment becomes prominent or not prominent, but it's behind prominent emotion, like a support. So we can see here the blue is the main color. But other colors, other jewels with other colors are supporting this and makes this bangle so attractive. And everything is a set in the gold structure of bangle. Everything. What is exists exists in Mahabhava. All emotions with different variations, amplitudes are actually representing Madana Mahabhava from Srimatara. So we can see here how one word in Divarakshi is important, like the start point to go deeper, and then following Raghunath in the words, we can flow in the middle of Lila, in the middle of some specific intimate situation. Because it will help our Smarana to come on the point of Dhyana deep meditation. Not rush, <laughs> like Gurudev told me, don't rush. Just stay and go down, down, no high, down, down, down. Draw. So, and the things, the situation will bring us new pictures and we don't have to make endeavor for that because immediately we can see that Raghunath is so close to Radhika that he is looking directly to her eyes like Tulsi Manjari looking to her eyes so the breath between them between Radhika Swamini and Manjari are exchanging the color of emotions of Radhika are coming in the heart of Manjari and the color of emotions of Manjari are coming in the heart of Radhika. And Manjari, because of that, exactly knows what is in the heart and in the mind of Swamini. And she is putting like a final 
one of the final decoration on Radhika's hands and say, this is a perfect alankara for you, ornament for you. You are embodiment of all ornaments. You are making ornaments so beautiful. Your love makes. It's not that ornaments makes you beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, we are putting ornaments to make ourselves beautiful. Isn't it? Even men, it doesn't matter. Not only ladies. But in the transcendental world of pure love, person who is embodiment of that love makes ornaments more beautiful. So I don't want to speak so much. Others have. But I just wanted to... To emphasize, actually, what Guru Dev told me, Suniti, my Didi, asked me to say something, but I wanted to share you what I sh receive from Guru Dev, and I'm trying to practice it. And whatever I do, whatever I speak, whatever I think, whatever I chant, I'm trying to do from this point. Only from this point. I'm not interested for my own thoughts, own emotions, own intelligence. No. I want to make heart, my heart connected with the hearts of those who are already with Srimati Radhika. And this is the only sadhana which I know. I'm completely use useless for any other sadhana. It doesn't function in me. <laughs> Sorry if I disappoint many of you. So after bracelets, Raghunath is putting the very nice rings on the hands because he's holding all Radhika's beautiful golden hands. I say, okay, now I will put the bracelets and now, like a crown of all decoration of your hand, it will come, these beautiful rings. And they have some special meaning, but not now. Thank you, we so beautiful. Radita, they might be. We are already getting excited now. But so I would like to repeat. Is it okay? Yes, so that we really can relish. <laughs> Ask Suniti. I, I, she is Suniti. leading. Is I'm it not... okay when I repeat this verse? And let it flow, Sudevi. Just let it flow. <laughs> oh, Indivarikshi, you girl with your blue lotus eyes. Will there ever be a time when I can ornament you with blue bangles inset with many jewels? When can I adorn both your hands that are expert in all arts and that are very dear to Sri Hari? When can I adorn those hands with beautiful, glistening rings? A divine stream of transcendental vision streams through Sri Raghunath's heart. <clears throat> Even those who are in the class of neophytes have some of these realizations. But Sri Raghunath is in the kingdom of Mahabha. He experiences all these things in a lively and vivid way. And after experiencing this, he reveals it through his prayers. 
even in his external consciousness, the internal consciousness twangs through. That is why his prayers are touching the heart so much. In his Swarup Avesh, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami as Tulsi Manjari puts blue bangles on Swamini's wrists. A golden color slightly shimmers through the blue, reminding Swamini of Shyam, the blue bangles, and his yellow dhoti, the golden color. What a wonderful handicraft. How wonderful is also the address Indivarikshi, girl with blue lotus eyes. Tulsi especially addresses Swamini like this to express what she relishes within her heart as she sees the blue bangles. All the emotions are manifest in Baba Mai. Her form and her bath are one and the same thing. Chaitanya Charitamrita says, her body consists of prema and is formed by prema. Hence, she know in the world as Krishna's beloved. From the time of Purvarak, when Radhika first saw Krishna, she saw the whole world to be full of Krishna. Therefore, she told her girlfriends, Osaki, as soon as I saw Kana, the whole world became filled with Cupid's flower arrows and my eyes could not see anything else anymore. This is the love of the embodiment of love. The poet Jayadev describes the condition of Varahini Roy in the Kunj. Shamasundra is late, and the Disakis described Virahini's conditions to Shamasundra as follows. Saranaga del microfono, please, sorry. Huh? Osham, Virahini Roy dwells in a lonely place and draws a form of you with musk, taking you to be Cupid. She draws a makara fish under your form and offers obeisances unto you with a mango butt arrow in the hand. Offering her obeisances, she says, O Madhava, I take shelter of your lotus feet. If you reject me, even the nectarian moon is burning me with its scorching flames. You are so rarely attained. And to die today, I came so close to you in my meditation. She takes the form. Rade, yeah. Rade. Radhika is teaching us here. I came so close to you in my meditation. So many times we heard this mental association, actually. 
So we should know that whatever, what is material, subtle, gross, comes in the touch with spiritual, is becoming spiritualized. So it means that when devotee thinks, especially with feelings, things, about subject which is transcendental, doesn't belong to this material world, but transcendental, in that moment, He's in very close association with this subject or person or lila on which he is meditating. This is the spiritual law, we can say. Spiritual law. If we think on something which is transcendental, we are immediately connect. We have to have shraddha, faith, sorry, faith in that. That in that moment we are connected with spiritual world. Maybe that connection is not complete and so deep that we forget this bodily consciousness. But as more is becoming deep, this forgetfulness of bodily consciousness will start to appear in the consciousness of devotee. This is the process. This is the why we have smarana, dharana, dhyana. Smarana is thinking about lila, nama, rupa, guna, lila of our beloved Ishtadev. But sometimes thinking, sometimes forgetting. Sometimes I think of another things. It's not stable meditation. But when devotee puts feeling in this marana, from his bhava, then he is coming on this stage of acceptance. When we accept something, then naturally thinking and meditation on this subject will be more spontaneous. When we accept, for example, you can tell me something, Goranga. Think about this. Okay, I will think. But if I didn't accept, and accept, what is acceptance? Acceptance is that I accept in the heart, in the feeling. If I don't accept, I will think because you told me. I read it. But this kind of thoughts is good because we have connection with transcendental. But the result will not be like it can be. So this second stage of dharana, acceptance, is very important for sadaka. And as I think in my personal life, this is my sadhana. I understand this. I, but accepting with heart, with emotion, not with intellect, with heart is helping to come on the third stage of deep meditation, jnana. And in that deep meditation, things start to coming out. Which kind of things? Transcendental, not material, transcendental, because Meditation is deep. Jainandaji, Sunitiji, and Radha Raman, and other devotees who read all these things, they know actually also how Rupa Goswami was making the example of his meditation. And he said the meditation must be like an oil, not water. He didn't say water, he said oil, <laughs> because the oil is thick, condensed. There is no any bubbles. In this, how you call it? Stream. I don't know. Stream. Yes, thank you very much. In this stream, there is no bubbles. And meditation is becoming like a thick oil 
and then some spurtis can appear but the will of guru radhika vaishnavas whoever is empowered to give this kripa so radhika is teaching here us i know what he said what she said i came so close to you in my meditation we have to be sure that through meditation we can be close to our beloved swamini and this is important step very important crucial step that we can be through meditation after that other stages are coming i want the direct or something like that. but before that desire for direct service will not be mature we can say i want directly to see radhika but it sounds immature <laughs> and someone who is mature can hear immatureness in this expression and guru they say yes 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 okay you will do it no problem but first accept and then go deep in meditation and radhika is also because she is virahini sudevi uh, she read it virahini because when we love someone then it means that we accepted that person we cannot say i love you but i didn't accept you <laughs> no i love you then i accepted you and because i accepted you i allowed you to come in my life because i can love you also but i will not accept you and at the same time i will not allow you to come in my life <laughs> this is too different thing but if i really accept you i accept you to you pervade me completely you are taking my life you are conducting my life and then dhyana deep natural meditation is complete natural and spontaneous but without acceptance it's not easy <laughs> let's see beautiful goraga it's really nice how you go uh, with the art of meditation through all the different stages and uh, i mean gurudev was speaking to us on wednesday shortly it was so nectarian and he also mentioned this point it's not enough to swim we have to dive and i myself i often find myself like okay i swim i swim like i like to listen you know i like to to hear i like to uh to like the idea that i am a dasi you know it's 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 more uh, swimming uh, what i understand and maybe the others they can also share their feelings to that i would like to hear your realizations on that or feelings that uh, swimming for myself is something where i have not assigned completely with radhika swimming for myself and i often catch myself in the swimming mode if you know what i mean <laughs> you know in the swimming consciousness that means yes there's swamini i am hadasi gurudev has told me i have all the procedures but i'm swimming i mean i'm shallow i'm not going deep and that is 
because I am not uh, so focused or so fixed, or maybe my my faith is not strong enough at that moment. You know, these stages they also fluctuate because when I have not the the deep deep ishta nishta and swarup nishta. Then, you know, sometimes I have a faith that it's true. And sometimes I'm also satisfied with swimming. But this desire to go deeper, you know, means like what you say, we we, we follow Raghunath Das Goswami's meditation, and then we want to feel something. And feelings come by the relation. And that is what Gurudev also told me, and I remember that this Dharan, you know, how to get these deep feelings in the meditation, not only reading words, reading sentences, trying to understand what they mean, and also enjoying them in a way because they are beautiful. Now, this is beautiful, the most beautiful poetry. I also find myself that I can have a liking of that. But to go deep in this relationship with Swamini, the daran, what I feel has to come to varan. That is this accepting stage when I put myself into the feelings of my dasiness. Let's say it like that. Who I am. No? Mostly I look at it from my humanness. And that is a percentage, you know, that is going on in my consciousness, fluctuating. How much am I in my egoness? How much am I in my humanness? How much am I in my dasiness? I mean, I'm just talking this maybe stupid words from trying to, to share with you what I observe myself on different levels. And you are sharing very beautifully. You are much more deeper than me, I must confess. But I am so proud of you, Goranga Sunda. That you are sharing this, yeah, because this is helpful for me also. I, you know, I don't want to talk and listen theoretically. I want to feel what others feel, and you help me feel. That is what's happening here right now. So I just uh, thank you for this, and I also want to invite Goravani. I didn't see you. You are here, Goravani. <laughs> Maybe not, mm. because we had yesterday that big uh, event together. It was, it was a lot of. Uh, <laughs> Isn't it in travel? No? Yeah, maybe he's traveling. But and also Maharaj Jayananda Maharaj and all of you devotees, please also express uh, what you um, feel in your own development of this. And I'm so thankful. Because it's not only about the words, like Gurudev said to us, how to deep, dive deep. And even if I cannot dive, uh, dive deep, I can cry for diving deep. Mm -hmm. I can pray for diving deep. I can pray for the next step that Gurudev will, you know, Shrimati Radhika, that they help me to, to come into the real relationship, not only theoretical relationship. Mm. That is uh, one point. I like to share from yesterday a little. Ah, Vasuna is back in town. <laughs> now the practical point is coming. <laughs> practical point. Practical. Not only Terry. Fuck our time. Yesterday we had this beautiful market here. We had uh, in the Govindas the first uh, market. That means uh, like a bazaar. Um, and we invited many, many people to come there. And it was sunny sh sunshine. And uh, the, how uh, does um, It was for the Prem Prashad. That was the goal for uh, to get some uh, Lakshmi for Prem Prashad. Everybody is donating a little bit. And um, then at noontime, suddenly the devotees from the temple came. The whole group came with Mahaprasad from Radha Madan Mohan. And at that moment, I could feel that Radhika accept our uh, project. 
when they came with this uh, was a small was a stand stall was a small stall and uh, sit there and came with maybe I think six to ten devotees from the temple. Even they have a uh, uh, um, a bhajan six hours or eight hours bhajan at the same day. They came to visit us, and then I could feel this. This what Suniti is telling us from the practical side that we are, even if we are on this material level, it came to the the next level. It was connected. There was a connection because that is as if Radhika came by herself. So I could feel this when they entered the Govinda brought a, so nice decoration with, with Mahaprasadam. Mm -hmm. It was very beautiful and all was in harmony. And after all, everybody was happy. Even it was a heavy, a lot of work to do this, to realize uh, this first market, this first bazaar. But uh, I think after all, we like to do it again and again, because mm -hmm. We there was a connection between the material world and the spiritual world. <laughs> it was um, more than it was not not a material. Uh, when when the when the temple came to us in the Govinda, then I was really surprised. So it was a uh, it was not not like, like planned. It was not uh, a plan that they came. They was inspired by this and. Somehow, I think when the when there is some happen happening in the temple, this is very special. We have to watch it very nicely because there is a different energy, and we can see that there is a. If the pujaris came personally, they are. Oh, sorry, I for the translation, I'm too fast. <laughs> So excited, sorry, he's so excited. <laughs> yes, Still, yes, it was really, really nice uh, experience that we are really uh, the Dasis who are preparing everything and we are connected. I could feel this connection uh, not only by the presence of Suniti or other uh, Manjaris around me, but when this temple devotees came and and take part of our uh, bemühung and they have a, a uh, service mm -hmm. uh, our service then it was really a, uh, that radika accepted and it was very nice after evening time all was laughing all was smiling all was happy mm -hmm. everybody really <laughs> from those who ha who run a, 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 a shop or also the the visitors all and many was there right mm. it was from different backgrounds they came mm. and all was happy and i think everybody got uh, everybody got mahaprasad mm. somehow it was all prasad all prepared by the devotees this is radhamadan mohan temple in golokada the, this temple is very close to our uh, company jainana maharaj you know this no Yes. And uh, yes, that was, no? that was beautiful. So that I like to share with all of you that there is even in this platform of material world, there is a, a mm. connection to another platform, to the higher platform. And there are signs we can see time to time that... Uh, that the connection is there. No? Thank you. That I want to share with all of you. <laughs> so I want to read yeah, huh? So, like, can I say a little bit? Please, we listen. We are greedy. So, like, Goranga Sundara Prabhu's realization is very great, and Suniti's comment also wonderful, and. Uh, Guru Dev used to say a sign. 
assigns another translation is acceptance. Like for example, if I want I want to accept say like a, like a wife or disciple, whoever. Even like say guru say maybe guru dev guru dev want to accept somebody without say without formal things without initiation at first acceptance is coming then acceptance coming then our relations is very close oh this man or this lady is a very nice person I like it. This kind of acceptance. Then, Gurudev want to you know pay attention to that devotee. We we have seen many many examples. Then some some stage Gurudev officially accept like this. So similarly, meditation also you know go after hearing Goranga Sundara Babu's thing. Smarana is like a uh, sanctuary. You know, sometimes, okay, I remember, you know, have home, is home, or sometimes good quality, you know, or nice, you know, behavior like this. But uh, not fixing, because not accepting enoughly. So, Goranga Sundari Prabhu said, accepting, so Dharana stage, is accepting means more or less one point. Of course, completely a completely hundred percent is is fixing the kind of maybe samadhi, but dharana stage like uh, accepting certain point. Then we can meditate, like say like lava in this material world. So, okay, I love this man, I love this lady, so I accept, okay, this person is my girlfriend, this person is my boyfriend, or more acceptance, this person is my wife, this person is my husband. Then more deeper, deeper relationship is coming, and more deeper relationship is coming. And also more feeling we could feel. Oh, she's feeling like this, her feeling like this, even between devotee. Okay, I accept this devotee, my, my dear. Then, okay, I want to share, I want to reveal my honest feeling to him or her. Mm -hmm. Then our relationship becomes very deep. Then we can meditate dhyana. And then Diana after Diana automatically like a flowing, flow is coming. This Durbanu Smriti, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> and then more fixing is like uh, we forget completely. I'm 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 meditating, I am not this body. <laughs> completely observing. So Goranga Sundar Prabhu give us very nice hint, I think. So at first we accept Ishtadev. And also we have to accept my Swarup. Also we have to <laughs> accept also Gurudev. By the mercy of Gurudev, this relationship is happening. Without Guru Rev, this relationship may not happen or never happen. <laughs> so then our meditation becomes very deep and deep. So therefore this acceptance, another word, assign. So Gorang Sundara Prabhu and Suniti Didi remind us acceptance and then we can become more dive more one point more style 
Gora Sundar Prabhu is a star. So, it, because he's completely accepting Ishta, Swarupa, and Guru, Guru Nishta. So, these three things is, is, is this Goranga, you know, Goranga Sundara Prabhu is telling us. This is, thank you very much. May I read? Huh? Yes, I repeat it. Sri Radhika told her girlfriends when she saw the no, sorry, from the first from the time of Purvarag, when Radhika first saw Krishna, she saw the whole world to be full of Krishna. Therefore, she told her girlfriends, Osaki, as soon as I saw Kana, the whole world became filled with Cupid's flower arrows, and my eyes could not see anything else anymore. This is the love of the embodiment of love. The poet Jayadev describes the condition of Virahini. I'm going to show you my, my, my computers. So. This is the love of the embodiment of love. The poet Jayadev describes the condition of Virahini Roy in the Kunj. Shyamasundra is late and the Sakis describe Virahini's conditions to Shyamasundra as follows. O Shyam, Virahini Roy dwells in a lonely place and draws a form of you with musk, taking you to be Cupid. She draws a makara fish under your form and offers obeisances unto you with a mango butt arrow in the hand. Offering her obeisances, she says, O Madhava, I take shelter of your lotus feet. If you reject me, even the nectarian moon is burning me with its scorching flames. You are so rarely attained. And today, I came so close to you in my meditation. She takes the form she drew on the canvas to be Krishna himself. Therefore, she sometimes tells it about a separation from you and cries. And sometimes she laughs, thinking you to be close by. Sometimes she is sad, thinking you have gone away from her. And sometimes she extinguishes the burning fire in her heart by embracing your form, thinking that you have come back. In this way, the embodiment of Mahabhav is decorated by a qualified maidservant who makes a relish rasa. So this is also a very important point, I think. Yes. That, uh, yes, we are saying a sign, but I want to repeat again. For me, my assigning now is with Shimante Radhika. Mm -hmm. And that uh, is, Baba is, Ananda Das Babaji Maharaj is explaining here, Shimati Radhika is decorated by a qualified maidservant who makes her relish rasa. So I like also Goranga Sunda when you explain that, that Shri Radhika is also giving this hint to 
to us that I came so close to you in my meditation. So I have to check myself. I am checking myself. How close am I in my meditation on Shrimati Radhika? And how am I, uh, if I'm not so close, how can I be closer? How can I come closer? How can I go deeper? Of course, it's all mercy. That is true. And uh, Gurudev is, is, is with us, always guiding from within and without. We have also heard this so nicely. But this, this is the, 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 the goal, to, to become a qualified maidservant. One time, Gurudev, you said also, yeah, but I am not a marked maidservant. <laughs> that was also so sweet. And I really had to think deeply about this. <laughs> what? Yeah, marked means, you know, accepted on the most deepest level. No? That is what um, Jainanda Maharaj was explaining. There's different, different kinds of acceptance in relationships. Same we can see in our relationship to Gurudev. It can be a formal initiation, and I'm a formal disciple, but has he marked me with his uh, kick? <laughs> or is he marking me again and again? <laughs> Whatever I need to go for the next step, that is the marking. And so also the maidservants, they are qualified because they are marked by Swamini. They have been really, you know, trained well, and she can... You know, there's so much oneness, so much closeness, and I am always checking myself. This is my homework. Who would have said this? Don't check others, check yourself. <laughs> Usually, always I like to check others. This is my material nature. Yeah, <laughs> I can be also a very bossy person. I am a manager, and when we do festivals, I have to check. But actually, spiritual world is different. We have to check. I want to check myself. <laughs> I have to check myself how uh, close am I to Swamini. And uh, that is the qualification. Am I close just in theory because I like to be a servant of my Gurudev and, you know, I'm in this nice group where everyone is speaking about love. That is nice. But really how close am I in my meditation, in my every thinking? In my very subtle closeness of relationship to Shrimati Radhika. And then I can serve to make her relish. Otherwise, it's all about me and myself and my body and my mind. But no, how is uh, Swamini right now? What she wants to, what she needs, you know, what services she needs and what is the meaning of putting the rings on her finger and all of the colors and all of the, you know, deep, deep mysteries of her service? And that is very, very nice verse to go deeper and to see also how does the maidservant feel and how does Swamini feel and what is the maidservant? What uh, am I supposed to, you know, how can I enhance her feelings? Her feelings for Mohan, her feelings for whatever she would like to, you know, have for the next step in my services. That I just want to see. When I read this, I feel, wow, the qualified maidservant who makes her relish rasa. This is also what I would like to become one day. By all of your mercies, I pray. Qualified maid servant. It's our goal <laughs> also. To whom to serve? Our supreme goal. So, like you mentioned, to be marked, it means to be qualified. But we can see that uh, many times Radhika is marking her maid servants through chastisement. Loving, intimate chastisement. Sometimes with the lotus flower, she just, pop, made servant. But sometimes with chastisement, she is marking. 
maidservant. So we have to accept that chastisement is a loving kripa. And chastisement is the sign of intimacy, like we heard many times, but we have to accept it. <laughs> that when Gurudev is chastising, this, this is the, another way of giving the garland, another way of giving the flowers in the form of Kripa, because he loves me so much that he wants to chastise me, to correct me for my benefit. Why? Because he wants me to become qualified maidservant, not to smash my ego, personality, or whatever. No, to make me qualified maidservant. And if disciple or any sadaka has this kind and doesn't have immediately, but nourish this kind of consciousness, then he will come on the stage of love to Gurudev and will be very happy when he is chastising him. And sometimes be very sad when he is praising him. Because if he is glorifying me, it, does, it means that something is wrong. <laughs> because he has to use such a flowery words and it means that I cannot digest his chastisement. But these flowery words, we have to be very, very careful, is also chastisement, but a very polite, very nice way to make us qualified maidservant. And to make us qualified maidservant, how we will know that we are becoming qualified maidservant? That's the question, like you said. How I will know? Because attachment for Radhika will appear. And attachment, not only taste, attraction, attachment to Radhika's maidservants. So when we hear the words of Raghunath, our heart will immediately start to tremble. Because we, we will, because attachment for Raghunath will is appearing in the heart, and because of this attachment, heart is trembling, and it's able to receive his emotions. His emotions. So, to become qualified maidservant, we need emotions of already qualified maidservants. And when we have a book of, for example, Vilapa Kusumanjali in our hands. What we have, many things we have in our hands. We have lotus feet of Swamini in our hands, both sides of the book, both lotus feet of the Swamini. But not only that, we have a heart of the Swamini in our hands. We have the lotus feet of Tulsi Manjari in our hands. We are putting book here. Why? Because we are putting lotus feet of Raghunath from our hands. And what are these hands are? This is our heart. This is our heart. We are putting, we are holding this book with two sides holding the lotus feet of Raghunath, holding the lotus feet of Anandadas Babaji, holding the lotus feet of Gurudev, and then we put here on the chest. So why I'm talking this? Because somehow I'm pretty convinced that is the way, one of the ways, how to make closer, intimate, emotional relationship with sadhus, rasic devotees. 
because he is speaking to me. I know he is speaking to you also, but for me, he is speaking to me. And he is giving directly to me. So we have to cultivate and nourish this consciousness because this is the personal way how we approach to sadhus. To feel their emotions and in that way we have to have a Sharada, faith, that they will slowly, gradually, progressively <laughs> become qualified maid servant. <laughs> and it means that we have to develop love for them, deep attachment for Raghunath, especially for those who are helping us in our desirable Bala. Mahabha. To love Prabhupada, to love Bhakti Nautakur, to love Narayan Maharaj, to be crazy about them, to be crazy about Raghunath. You know, this is the passion actually, addiction. This is the way how we have to practice, this is the way how we have to live in Braja, with addiction and passion. Spiritual, from spirit, not. I'm not talking at all about this kind of passion of body. You have to feel first closeness with those who are already close with Radhika. I'm endeavoring this. I'm trying to put myself. I need blessings for that. I need blessings for it. But to love Prabhupada, to love Ananta Das Babaji, to appreciate that. And then the mind will not go on the surface. Automatically, with help of love, will go deeper, deeper, deeper. Because only love can drown us down. Ego will push up, push us high but love can bring us down and first love is starting with those who are already in love knowing they are not a goal like Gurudev is saying but with love with them for them their love, because they don't have anything else than Radhika, their love for Radhika will be infused in our hearts. Their love. And awake our love also, which is waiting. Why we are not satisfied, never in the life, whatever we do, we are not satisfied. Because true love is weak. It's not appear fully, in full intensity in our heart. So we need the help. No one of us can do it alone. It's not possible. It's impossible. Mission impossible. <laughs> but with strong connection, with Raghunath by reading his words. And this is what I learned from Gurudev. Don't jump. Just follow the words. Follow the line. Forget examples which are coming in your mind. Just go down in this line. In this line. It's nothing going in your mind. Okay. <laughs> Don't jump. We have... It means to follow the mood, follow the flow. And Chanchala mind is always going up and down, left and right, in 10 directions. Honestly, I'm speaking. He, he was chastising me. I read something, 
And he said, explain it. And I start to speak something about that. What are you doing? You're not in the flow. Speak what is in, in the text, in this specific part of the text. Speak about that. And I said, but nothing is coming. And that's okay. It's better nothing to come than to speak different things. You have to learn to flow. It's not easy. Janadaji says, Sanchari, Chanchala. I say, Chanchala. Very restless mind. And this is the reason why we are reading, listening, talking, meditating. To be in the flow. Immediately, if we go out to the flow, you can feel it. Everyone can feel it. Isn't it? My dear. And what we feel? A little pain inside. Little. But if we just continue to flow in the sentences, because we are flowing in the feelings of the words of Acharyas, it's not sentences, it's not black and white letters. We should learn to flow. And they are helping us not to make different subject matters in our consciousness, in our tongues, or so on. This is practice. It takes time. Sorry. You inspired me because uh, Suniti inspired me so much because she is humbly speaking about that she is swimming on the surface and immediately I was thinking why I'm also surfing in the surface, swimming, not drowning inside. Because I cannot follow the flow. I don't know how to do that. I want, but I don't know how to do it. And Gurudev is helping me, giving me. For me, this is practical example. Flow in one sentence, flow in one word. And learn how to do it. And learn how to stay then. To stay is also a very important thing. Many times, Sunitiji has experience about that more than me. When you are talking with Gurudev or you are reading to him and not, and suddenly silence is appears. Why? He is so silent because he wants to, he is relishing and he wants to help us. Stop now. Stop, my dear. <laughs> And stay. It means stop. Stop means stay, actually. This is the practice of meditation. To stop, to stay. In all yogas is like this, specifically in bhakti, specifically in rasa, to stay. And we have many bad habits. After lecture, we start to speak about so many other things. No, stay. Especially when we are home. We have a condition is very good that we can stay. It's, we have to learn it. It will not come automatically. With all mercy which we have, this is on our part. Sorry. I, I came in the mood of something else, but because Suniti helped me so much of this surface, swimming. I'm swimming also. And then I'm just drowning a little bit. And, oh, no, I have to continue to swim. I'm not used for dr drowning. But did you try? Yes, I try. I know. That. But did you put all your hands? Head, 
down? Yes, many times. And your body? Oh no, my legs are still are jumping on the surface. Just go down, down and stay. And you will, because Gurudev is trying to teach us that this drowning is the slow process. In the beginning, we are drowning very fast. <laughs> but the more deep you are going, the movements are slower. The movements are slower. I don't know if you have experience with drowning. I have some experience about that, physical, with my body. And the more after five meters, 10 meters, you have to stop all your movements practically just to accept that you are coming down and just little moving the legs and hands. So this is the meditation. This is dhyan. This is dhyan. Deep meditation with focused goal. I want to go down to the bottom to take this beautiful pearl. This is my goal. But in meantime, I have to learn how to swim, then how to drown deeper and deeper and deeper. And best way is to follow, follow Anugatya, of our Acharyas. Sunitiji, it's your fault. <laughs> I'm result of your fault. <laughs> I'm sorry, my bad association make you so like this. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, uh, Sudevi, are you ready to continue? Hmm? Yes, of course I am, Mensch. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Srimati sees Shamasundra's reflection in the blue luster of the Bengals. When Tulsi sees the beauty of Swamini's eyes, she calls her Inda Indi Varikshi. She, whose eyes are as beautiful as blue in the Vara Lotus. Your eyes are naturally beautiful, but when they see Shyam, they are so much more beautiful. In the opening verse of his Dana Keli Kaumudi, Sri Rupa Goswami prays to Sri Radhika's eyes that reveal the ecstatic symptom of Kila Kinchit for the welfare of the world. May Sri Radha's glances that are beautified by the bouquet of the sevenfold Kila Kinchit ecstasy bestow auspiciousness on you. When Krishna stops Sri Radha on the road near the Danagati at Gopadan Hill, her eyes attain a certain shimmer because of her slight smile of joy. Her eyelashes are covered with teardrops and the corners of her eyes have become slightly reddish, having been sprinkled by Rasikata, tastiness. They have begun to shrink because she sees Krishna standing before her, and her pupils have become extraordinarily beautiful, as they assume a certain sweet kind of crookedness. 
Smile. Oh, I would like to. I might like. I'd like to uh, stop here a little bit yes. because I. I. Uh, I think these details are so important. Yes. yes. About her eyes, actually. Here, Rupa Goswami is is uh, revealing that because she she is uh, Rupa Manchari, so so she is looking also very closely to Shrimati Radhika's eyes. And by looking in the eyes, she can feel her feelings. Yes. And, and so different feelings. So layers of different feelings. Shall I read it again? It's so beautiful. May Sri Radha's glances that are beautified by the bouquet of the seven fold Kila kinship ecstasy bestow auspiciousness on you. When Krishna stops Sri Radha on the road near the Danagati at Govardhan Hill, Sri Mati's eyes attain a certain shimmer because of her slight smile of joy. Her eyelashes are covered with teardrops and the corners of her eyes have become slightly reddish, having been sprinkled by rasicata, by tastiness. The eyes have begun to shrink because she sees Krishna standing before her and her pupils have become extraordinarily beautiful as they assume a certain sweet kind of crookedness. Yes, this is this Kila Kinchit ecstasy that we have heard so much about that is so famous. Our Swamini is famous because of this. It has different, different feelings that are coming in her heart, coming in her when she is coming together with her beloved. And these different, different feelings, they are like opposition feelings. Mm -hmm. At the same time, she likes to look at him. At the same time, she doesn't want to. She, her eyes become small. At the same time, she is excited to meet him. At the same time, she feels like running away. And many things, all of these different, different feelings. And what I just thought as a manjuri, meditating on her feelings means to, to meditate what is my, my next service now. How, you know, how can I assist Swamini in her feelings? And also a nice point that I remember, Goranga Sundara, that what you always uh, like to um, bring closer to us and to yourself, of course, is that the feelings, they come through the eyes and through the motions of the, you know, observations, and then we become more quiet. It's nothing. It's a silent service. It's also when we are together with Gurudev, we try to feel, you know, each other and with our brothers and sisters. And I'm just now missing uh, Jainanda Maharaj and uh, also our dear. Are you there? Yes. yes. You have gone uh, into the darkness of what, what happened. The light is <laughs> dying. <laughs> Diving. <laughs> oh, diving. You, you are in the deep dive after Gorana Sundara was, was explaining us how to go deep in the, in the five to ten meters. I was shocked. Five to ten meters. I never dive so deep. <laughs> so much. Oh, my God. God. <laughs> Such a pleasure. <laughs> so okay, good to feel you with us. Good to oh. feel you with us. <laughs> Yeah, these meditations, they are quiet, they are silent, and it's not, 
it's not only with Gurudev, but like we are the Dasis together in the Kunj of Radha Mohan. So we want to feel each other. What do you need? How can I serve you? How can I assist you? Mm, how can I learn from you? You know, this is like many things are just going through the eyes, isn't it? Swamini is fond of black things and any kind of blue color inside her. As soon as any kind of blue color comes to her, she feels as if Shamasundra has come before her. Hey, Sri Radhe, you are, you are fond of anything which may remind you of Sh Shyam through its color or its name, Tamala trees, the new moonlight, a fresh monsoon cloud, or a blue lotus flower. She does not see the blue bangles, but she sees Krishna. She cannot understand this. There's a quotation from Chaitanya Charitamrita. Radhika is called Krishna Mai because Krishna is within her and without her. Wherever her glances fall, there she sees Krishna. She is seeing the Bengals. But she thinks she sees Shyam. Tulsi sees that Swamini's eyes that are the same blue color as Krishna is are filled with emotion when she thinks she sees Shyam. That is why she addresses her as Indi Varikshi, blue lotus-eyed girl. When these eyes see Krishna, these blue eyes become even more beautiful. She does not know whether she sees Krishna or the blue bangles. Tulsi performs Prasanga Seva by reminding Swamini of Shyam. Sri Banga Bihari Vidya Alankara adds, Oh, Indivarikshi, your eyes are like blue lotus flowers that attract the Krishna bee. Tulsi will now place the bangles on Swamini's arms that she calls Hari Daitya, Hari's, Hari's beloveds. He is Radhika's Hari and he removes all obstacles with the savour of his own sweetness. He takes away Harana, he takes away all her shyness, he takes away her opposition and other obstacles to their meeting or savouring of his sweetness. Hari is Katura Shiromani, the crown jewel of clever pranksters. By cleverly attracting Sri Radhika with the sweetness of his form, qualities of his pastimes and flute playing, 
Shia makes her forget everything. In his Rada, Rasa Sura Nidi, Srila Prabhupada Saraswati shows how difficult it is for Sri Radhika to maintain her pride. When Sri Radhika is angry with Krishna, her first resolution is, I will not look at him anymore. But Krishna, the crown jewel of clever pranksters, speaks in such a sweet way and stands before her as if he begs her, look at me just once. Seeing the sweetness of his form, the Sakis tell each other, aha, how sweetly he stand there in his threefold bending form. The life of that lady love who does not see that sweetness is wasted. Hearing these words of her friends, Srimati becomes eager to see Krishna and looks at him once. Thus, her first resolution is broken. Her second resolution is, I won't speak with him. How nicely Krishna is speaking. Swamini cannot stay silent anymore and tells him, go to that girl that you love. Another gopi. What you are standing here for, speaking such clever words. Thus, her second woe is gone. Her third woe is, I won't touch him. But Krishna gradually brings his food forward and touches the tips of Srimati's toes. This makes her unsteady. So, she angry takes Krishna by the hand and pushes him out of the kunj. <laughs> Srimati thinks, just see, now I've also touched him. If I could not keep any more, then how can I keep him away? Mm -hmm. So, she holds him by the neck and brings him back into the kunj. In this way, Hari steals Swamini's heart in so many ways. Therefore, she once told her Sakis, O oh, Saki, tell me, what should I do? I don't know what kind of spell Vidakta Roy, the king of clever pranks, has put on me. Yes, I can't resist the temptation to step onto the veranda to see him without considering how crazy and dangerous it is. By seeing his form, I have built my own samadhi. Day and night, my heart cries in a severe fever. If I say anything else in front of my superiors, the name of Shyam may accidentally come from my mouth. Now, Tulsi, okay. yes. So, sweet pastimes. And I just want to say something, how Radhika, with her personal example, is showing us that vows in Vraja doesn't work. <laughs> Why doesn't work? Because this is the land of love. And only vow which works is to always be in love. And Vraja is the place for relishing. It's not the place for vows, austerities, and so on, and so on. So, 
we should allow ourselves to go in this mood of relishing because in relishing there is no place for anything else than relishing if something some desire for vows some desire for austerities appears it will block this relishing <laughs> <laughs> this is the secret of association with Vraja Vasis. To learn from them how to relish, not how to make vows. If you want to learn how to make and maintain your vows, go another place. But Vr Vrindavan is not a place for austerities and vows, it's for relishing. <laughs> and Prabhupada. I also, I also have to glorify Prabhupada once more. Devotees, when they were in Radhakund one time, together with Prabhupada, very enthusiastic devotees, they said, Prabhupada, we want to build a temple here in Radhakund. And Prabhupada said, okay, but what you are planning to do in this temple? And they enthusiastically, and like a young girls and boys, that uh, we will do Sankirtan, preaching. And Prabhupada said, no, no, you cannot do in Radha Kund. Radha Kund is men meant for relishing. So all the practice, what is mentioned in Shastras, you have to forget. Don't be the slave of rules and regulations. Don't come in that trap. Kartik, vows for Kartik is actually 24 7 all year vow that I will be in love with Jagdika. This is only vow. And I have to relish her name, her form, her qualities in association of same persons with same feelings so vows doesn't work but one thing is working lying stealing <laughs> this is raja mood <laughs> you understand this is raja mood and it's very allowed and preferable <laughs> you we cannot be rajavasis if we cannot lie if we cannot <laughs> <laughs> if we are stick to the Dharma, we cannot come in the Vraja relishing mood. I am exaggerating a little bit, but I want to, to show how big, big, huge, completely huge differences. And this is the, between Vraja mood and the mood of other Tirtas, holy Dhammas, holy places. This is completely and this is the reason why so many people, so many even devotees, cannot come in this mood of Vraj, because they need close association with Vrajavasis. Vraja Loka Anu Sarata. Krishna is lying. And her mother, his mother is also lying. Yashoda for his benefit at that the point to save him from some dangerous situation mother has to lie but can you imagine in matura the devaki is lying to vishnu <laughs> no <laughs> this is not the mood <laughs> so we have to, <laughs> to go in this flow in this stream of mood rajavasi's mood this is the reason why it's so spontaneous, because always is 24-7 is relishing, relishing the relationship, loving, sweet relationship. And this is why it's so spontaneous. Without vows, without austerities, and also so, 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 so. So, oh, Kuranga so no, but now I, I get some, what? 
nothing okay i get some uh it, it's it's 10 minutes only we have left and and so i was thinking that uh we have to hear from you about shrimati radhika's rings what you hear from gurudev please tell us something a little bit uh, next time huh? <laughs> <laughs> no uh, no no this is just being tricky <laughs> Yes, this, this is the tricky mood of Rajavasis. I'm <laughs> yeah, you just speak about that mood, and now you try <laughs> yeah. it on us. <laughs> really yeah, good cliffhanger. <laughs> I'm sorry, erotic, like Guru Desya, erotic. <laughs> <laughs> so perhaps. And sometimes I, Guru Desya says, "Yes, this is very good question. You can, you can come in Vrindavan, you know." <laughs> yeah, come you can go. To Devi on page 127 and read Sri Radhika wears jeweled rings on all of her fingers. Just I need to hear this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sri Radhika wears jeweled rings on all her fingers, except of her thumb, the index finger and the middle finger of her right hand. Normally, the moon and the lotus cannot be seen together. But on Sri Radhika's extraordinary, transcendental, lotus-like hands, it is as if the moon fearfully takes shelter. That Therefore, I don't understand also, that sentence. I don't understand the sentence. <laughs> so I think we need to explain this. <laughs> 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 I'm so stupid. Help me. <laughs> who is the moon and who is that trend, the lotus and what is it with the fingers? Please. <laughs> Normally. <laughs> Normal? Normally. The moon and the lotus cannot be seen together. Normally. Because when the moon arises, lotus flowers are just yes they are not okay. blooming yeah they're they're closed they mm -hmm. they are closed yes normally but in this situation when radha is krishna is coming together then situation is completely opposite because of appearance of the moon lotus is inspired to open Now, we can ask who is the moon and who is the lotus. <laughs> mm. And it depends. Sometimes Radhika's face is shining like the moon and all her appearance is shining like the moon. And Krishna, blue lotus cannot resist he has to be submissive and surrender to herself. And so knowing this, Manjari wants to make Radhika more attractive. As the moon is so attractive when a lot of stars around it. So Manjari is putting these fingernails, uh, no fingernails, uh, rings, finger rings, full of different precious stones, especially sapphires, so that Radhika's appearance with these shimmering, shiny, stars around the moon is looking more more attractive so that Mohan has to faint because he will see Tribangi Vilasini appearance before him and as he is a chanting all others with his tribanga form, she is chanting him. 
like taking this beautiful position of three Bangini Vilasini. And she's shining like a moon, especially with these ornaments of bracelets and finger on the finger, these rings. <laughs> Please detail switch gems, colors, facets. <laughs> there is one question. The main, as I know, the main jewel gem is a sapphire. But around this sapphire is the different diamonds, like Navaratnakara, different main nine jewels, which are from the precious stones and also some pearls are present there. And they are representing, it's not just the jewel, it's just representing Radhika's emotions. Mm. Rubine, Rubin, how you call it on English? Ruby. Ruby, yeah. Anurag. So strong. Feeling of passion which Radhika feel to satisfy Krishna's passion. And when Krishna sees this, he is aware about that. Emerald. Green color. How green becomes green? When blue and yellow are merged together. This is loving embrace between Radha and Moha. And Moha knows, oh, she is promising me to fulfill my desire. And we can see in some verses of Acharyas, they're saying that Krishna's color is green. And we ask ourselves how it's green now. Isn't he is blue? No, because he's in, embraced with Radhika. <clears throat> but Acharyas knows this code language. And they are writing on a hidden way about Parakyabha. So the moon's beloved stars, beloved rings, our surrounding petal-like fingers of these lotus-like hands, spreading lovely kind of beauty, spreading Mahabhava everywhere and embracing Mohan. Because when Radhika is Rasamayi, she sees Krishna everywhere, but in her glance, by seeing Krishna everywhere, she is embracing everything. And every forest becomes yellow, green, blue, or whatever. So, These rings, I think the time is going on. These rings, I, I will explain just in a few hints. It's suggestion on Kama Gayatri. Very subtle suggestion on Kama Gayatri Mantra. And Rupa Goswami is giving explanations that the rings are not present on all fingers especially on the right hand. These three fingers, thumb, this finger, and this middle index. finger. Mm -hmm. Yeah, index finger, this. They are without rings. And yesterday, we had one 
readings in those main words, how Krishna sometimes is radic uh, yeah, is scratching the Radhika with his nails. But also Radhika is scratching Krishna with her fingernails. And I said. <laughs> Radhika. <laughs> we have to come to Vrindavan to get these secrets. <laughs> as as Guru did. This is the subject, perfect question and perfect subject for meditation to answer appear in bhajan. That's the point. And sometimes it took a few months. <laughs> Isn't it, Jayananda? Sometimes it yeah. happened like yeah. this. It cannot, it's not yeah. in, instant, instant answer, yeah. you know. Yes. Because if we receive instant answer, we will forget it. Mm. But if we come through bhajan to that answer, a check with Gurudev. It's very beautiful, you know. Then this is some scar which will never leave our heart. Wow, very nice. Radhe, Radhe. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, really I'm sorry. Suniti provoked me so much. Yeah, Suniti. I, kept drank. I, was I needed to... <laughs> you are so sweet, Mandaris. Yeah, no, no, no. playing together, Suniti and Gora. <laughs> to dance. So nice, so sweet. I needed today some refreshment. That is your mercy on me. All of your mercy. And also, Gora, you know, Gora Sundara. Gora and Sundara. They're also very beautiful conversation between Radhika and Krishna. You know? It, it <laughs> and Manjari was facing so much. Anyway, so maybe what? Like, oh, Maharaj, what's the conversation? Now you start and then you stop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because because Gorang Sundara give give us some some next time, you know, and then you know Radhika was you know you know Radhika was joking, you know Radhika and. Uh, and Krishna was joking so much and very funny joking. And then Manjari was, you know, listening like, you know, jig, you know. And uh, maybe, I, I don't know, maybe next time I should say, because of, you know, this, this finger. Okay. This finger. Fingers are very important. Very important. You know, Radhika is joking, it's very sweet. You know, killing the demon. You are killing demon. You know, like this. But you are also saying the same thing you are doing for me, like this. So maybe next time. <laughs> because also, he did not say it in detail, you know. I was. No, it's good. We have some inspiration for meditation and we can read again. We read again this verse and we are chanting, we go deeply and we develop some greed. Thank yeah. you for this. No. And our Gurudev is, is here. Gurudev, are you there? Nope. I saw he was listening. Mm. No. Mm -hmm.
we are over time. But so much uh, love was flowing and such a lovely f uh, verse. And maybe I can also post the verse uh, when uh, Gurudev was speaking to you about this verse. I can post it again. Mm -hmm. Good idea. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's a nice class. To hear Gurudev's words. Yeah, Gurudev's yeah, yeah. Explanation it's, because yes. sometimes he is, you know, he is giving hints and uh, is squeezing actually our hearts that we come to some conclusions, conclusions which we never before came. Mm. So this is the point actually when he gives. A, Honestly, to say about these rings, it took one year for me. In your meditation, before you got the questions and the, yes. you know. He gave me just one sentence like answer. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it took one year. Wow. Yeah, it's good to know that this is not something that it comes overnight. It is something mm -hmm. really, we need some greed and we need some continuation in our in our bhajan in our chanting and praying and you know all these things in our meditation this is the reason why i'm so boring and i'm always telling slowly slowly repeating gurudev's words and be connected with him with all these beautiful acharyas because everything will come you know but not fast not fast mm. not fast Otherwise, mm. we will come in the trap of practicing so, with so only bad. with the body. That's the point. Radhe, Radhe, thank you very much. I'm sorry for my arrogance. Thank you all. Thank you all. Radhe, Radhe. Thank you. Thank I hope devotees. everyone.